Thank you, everyone. We always talk about individuality when it comes to finding your own interests and being yourself, but we rarely talk about the role that school plays in how you find yourself. Schools are catered to one specific type of student, and often we lose sight of the fact that kids learn individually and in unique ways. We cannot expect each student to learn in one specific way of education. Most kids start school in kindergarten, some in preschool around the age of four or five. That is when our education begins and when we are surrounded by people outside of our parents and our siblings. Schools, however progressive they may be, are constantly shaping our values and our freedoms to create a specific type of student. Looking at all education objectively, how many people have been shut down by leadership? How many times have you filtered your true opinion in order to get a grade or to please a teacher? In an article by Julie Melnick, she provides an overview on how education is built to teach students in the same form across the board. She states, the education system assumes they can find one way to morph their students early on in education so that they remain easily teachable for generations, learning the same concepts and ideas as the generations before, learning skills that each student poses forming that perfect cookie cutter student. School is a wonderful tool to start off a child's education, but many schools fall into this restrictive way of teaching, stripping students of individuality. How will we be able to hold our own opinions and ideas if we are all funneled into, the, into one learning process? Canadian dropout rates for high school students in Canada is around 10% countrywide, according to Pathways to Education and Canadian Statistics. And although it has decreased, there are still thousands of kids that don't graduate high school. As you reach high school, the pressure to get good grades increases and students are focused on applying to universities. High schools push for each student to graduate with a high level of math, science, and their grade 12 English. And they expect students to achieve this through traditional testing and assignments, despite learning differences. In an excerpt from National Academics, they state that testing is for determining which students are eligible for promotion to the next grade and for graduation. And these tests are very mainstream, standardized assessments. They then go on to say, Test results may penalize students who are the victims of ill-prepared teachers, poorly run school districts, or other circumstances beyond their control. Many tests do not look at outside achievements for students. You could be getting 90s on a project in class, but when the test rolls around, score below a 50, which drops your grade significantly. As a high school student myself, I can say with confidence that many people find tests create higher levels of stress and hold unrealistic standards for those that learn with different strategies. If schools switch to accommodate those who do not test well, the number of successful students could climb dramatically. A school in Norway focuses on UDESCO learning, which means outdoor school, where they combine outdoor activities with mathematics, science, or English. For example, teachers would use body movement and outdoor games to teach students their timetables or how to calculate distances while standing in an area, or writing poetry about nature while in nature. Not only does this type of learning provide an additional approach to education, it has also been proven to reduce stress in students, which is a key factor to their success. In a Danish study, they stated, the pupils express a significantly higher level of well-being, improved social relations, and joy while being taught in the outdoors compared to classroom teaching. Another study was done on unschooling, focusing on hands-on experiential-based learning for homeschooled students. This way of teaching pushes education that is based around the student's own interests. By mixing physical learning with classroom work, certain unschooling institutions have stated that their test scores are higher than those in traditional schools. There is a large debate on whether or not unschooling is beneficial in the long run, especially if parents are not teaching learning skills such as basic math or reading. But however controversial unschooling is, it allows students to learn concepts through their own interests and allows them to find their true passions from a young age something that many high school students don't find until much later. Growing up from a traditional school myself, I only found what I was passionate about earlier this year. And I know many people who have switched university majors halfway through because they realize it just isn't what they're interested in. A survey from Psychology Today shows that 80% of unschooled students achieve are in a career that matches their childhood interests and around 60% have achieved a BA or higher in their education. If traditional high schools took on more individual learning tactics, schools would not only be broadening students' knowledge, but also allowing them to pursue topics that they're interested in. If testing was altered to show their true understanding instead of just memorization or writing skills, students would be able to showcase their knowledge in a form that they are good at. 
Now, this change in schooling won't happen overnight, but for yourself, you can start choosing your own learning. Find topics that interest you and explore ways to broaden your abilities outside educational structures. This can lead to finding your most authentic interests that may be unrelated to what you were taught at school. As the education systems begin to adapt, we need to advocate for our own learning and start raising awareness on different teaching styles and methods. Schools must start looking at each person individually and find ways to help each student succeed through a multitude of education structures. Thank you for listening and I hope you found something in this speech to inspire your own learning. Have a great night.